Hey guys, welcome to an Off the Grid segment. We are here the morning of the matchup between the Boston Iron and the New York Rhinos, and we are sitting with Whitney Galen, and I will be the first announcer to say that right, Whitney <laughs> Galen and Lindy Barber. How you doing, guys? Good, good. We're sitting awesome. with the winners of the match. <laughs> yeah, right. And we haven't even done it yet, right? Damn right. That's <laughs> absolutely right. Damn right, I hope so. All right, so one of the things we wanted to talk to you guys about today was uh, you guys just came out of the games, right? Uh, pretty grueling week. Uh the games has turned it's not really turned into a long endurance sport it's been that way for a few years so being two sport athletes uh, most people that just went through the games are probably sitting on a couch somewhere on a beach somewhere they're recovering they're chilling uh you ladies are you know putting on your uniform and going to your second um sport and and ready to do an athletic event here right after it how do you how do you do that (laughs) like how do you recover have you recovered um mentally physically just give us some insight on how how you guys approach all that Uh, I would be totally lying if I said that I was 100% recovered. I'm definitely not. Um, This was my third full year of officially training to be at the Games every single year. So this is what I keep calling the end of my third year of very intense trying to be at the Games full training. Um, And it definitely this last year, because I knew that the competition was going to get a whole lot harder, definitely took a toll on my body. So over last week, I rested as much as possible. I was still in my gym and coaching and back to my full-time job, but I wasn't doing heavy hitting workouts. This week leading into this week being here, um, I tried to do a little bit more grid stuff and test out some elements and see how I was feeling on those. Um, And my coach and I, Josh Poshker, talked a little bit once I got here about what I was actually going to be successful at, but I did still feel a little bit slow on some elements. I think that my my brain is definitely ready to compete, and I very mentally am competitive, and I wish that I could be out there and doing everything and be fully into it, but I knew that my body wasn't ready to be able to handle the very fast pace that needs to be handled on the grid, and so we talked a little bit, and I'm not in as many elements as we initially thought that I was going to be in throughout this match, but I know that the, the better person is going to be out there, the person that's more ready and that will be faster in those elements will be there. So I'm contributing as much as I can, knowing what my body can handle. We also talked about that I didn't want to dig myself a hole. So since we have another match in essentially two weeks from now, we didn't want to put me into too many elements this week and not be able to even further recover and then dig even a deeper hole and have a right. whole other week of kind of laid off. So we wanted to, do, to test me a little bit this week in some elements, but not push too hard so that I can continue to recover and then be 100% instead of being about 70% at each. We wanted to be 100% at our next match. Mm-hmm. So we rested a little bit. I'm definitely still recovering. I can tell in my training that I'm just getting more fatigued more quickly than normal. I keep telling people it's like the first two or three reps feel awesome, but then the next, you know, reps five and six feel like all of a sudden I'm at, I'm at the end of a 20 minute AMRAP. Like everything just gets a little bit harder and it happens very quickly. I think my CN is more shot than actually my muscles and my body. It's just telling me to slow down and trying to get me to recover because the games is so not only physically but mentally and emotionally draining. Right. Um, but I think it'll be I think it'll be good. I think that when you are when you know that you're dedicated to these two sports. Of course, you're dedicated to the games, but we knew going in after qualifying for the games that we still had this very quickly coming up after. So we were almost, I was almost prepared that as soon as the games ended, I had a couple days and I needed to reset and refocus my mind into the grid season. And I was ready to do that. And I'm ready now. My brain is totally ready, but we're just trying to play my body a little bit by ear and make sure that we don't further damage it from. So specifically, like since you, you brought that up, you knew you were coming into this match. Like for you, what was your plan? What did you think to yourself? What are the, you know, top five things I have to do post games, you know, post event to get ready for that? Like, how did you recover? Because I think a lot of athletes like there would would like some insight into like, how do you do that? Like, you know, what it is, do you sit down with four gallons of water and pray, talk to Buddha? (laughs) That was all I did, actually. Uh, When I got home, so I got home Monday on Tuesday I tried to go into the gym, actually, and I was supposed to be working on Tuesday and Wednesday and be coaching classes, and when they saw how sore I was and how not limber I was moving around the gym, my coach was just kind of like, you should go home. Like, you should just be there. We will cover your classes for you. You need to recover. So So left up to your own devices, you would have been out there working out and, like, right back into the gym. I would have loved (laughs) to be coaching. And I mean, I love love my full-time job. I love being in the gym. I love what I do. So I wanted to be in there, but he was basically... 
everyone was kind of telling me like, you can't demo very correctly. You need to go home. (laughs) So Tuesday and Wednesday (laughs) was literally primarily sleeping. I slept as much as possible. I did as least as possible. I drank lots and lots of water. I ate, I was basically waking up, eating a lot of food, watching a couple things on TV and then falling back asleep on the couch and taking a two hour nap and then waking up and being like, Oh, I'm kind of hungry and eating more food and then falling back asleep on the couch. So that was for about two days <laughs> was really what I did. And right. I think once your body recovers and I'll let, let Whit talk about this a little bit too, but once you sounds like a normal Sunday, for yeah. <laughs> <laughs> once your body recovers and your muscles start to feel less sore, then my emotional state and like just kind of calm down. Right. So once you can sleep well, then it was like all of a sudden you're in a very deep sleep and I just wanted to just keep laying down and keep sleeping. So yeah. after those two days, then Thursday and Friday, I felt much, much better. Like back to a normal human being. I had normal functioning. I could I could demo, you know, a strict press for my class, which was great. <laughs> so then I got back into it a little bit and then on Monday is when I actually started to move some weight on a barbell and actually touch some, you know, some equipment in the gym. Cool. So rest. Is a oh big yeah, piece of my it, big. Right? I mean, my biggest recovery. Sure, I did some Mark Pro and a lot of stretching and some lacrosse ball and foam rolling. But my my biggest recovery is literally just sleeping, like yeah. letting your body a hundred percent relax. You don't have that time during the games, and when you're there, I personally did not sleep very well because not only you're very sore, so you're not very comfortable, yeah. but your brain is. You know, there's always something happening the next day, so you're thinking about the next competition that you have, so you can't. Your brain doesn't shut off. It doesn't did, shut off. Did both of you ladies have that thing? Like, I, I know that if I go through an intense workout I, and I try to sleep at night. Sometimes I'll wake up like three or four hours after I fell asleep and my my body just can't stop moving. Like I have to move my legs, have to move my arms, something because, you know, my, my muscles are just firing still at night. You guys have that during the games and how are you able to get through that, like to sleep? Um, you know, I think Lindy's basically knocked it out of the park here. Everything. Uh, <laughs> She's still your thunder. Yeah, she did. <laughs> Gosh. But, um, you know, I didn't sleep very well at the games either. You know, you're in a different bed. You're super sore. But um, one thing that I did do is I, they gave us these really, really pretty compression pants. They were hideous. Yeah, yeah I <laughs> but saw what those. I, did is I saw those I, online. I wore, I wore those compression pants to bed, maybe try to decrease some of the swelling that might have happened in my legs and whatnot. And mm-hmm. uh, I think that might have helped me recover in the long run, having, having some compression on my body. But, yeah, I, d- I definitely struggled to sleep a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. What's the um, so when you when you so let's back up a little bit. What, how was your preparation for the games? Um, is it was it any different? How did you how did you prepare coming into the games, knowing you're coming into the grid match? Well, like Lindy said, Josh set us down. He said, "Look, you know, after our our first match, he said, you know, we're, we're leading up to our second match, but we have a couple athletes going to the games, and that's our big fear is how will you guys feel coming off the games? Will you be able to perform coming off the games?" So. Josh said it into our head early on that that's going to be something that he's looking at. That's going to be part of the evaluation of who's playing and, and you know, what elements we're doing. So I think we were all prepared for that uh, and understanding what our roles would be depending on how we felt. Um, in terms of preparing for the games versus com- versus preparing for grid, you know, it's so individual and in, in what we're doing. And it's all about being able to shine where you can shine and um, understanding what your body you know, is capable of doing, and I've I've never been to the CrossFit Games. Um, this was the first year that 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 had happened, so I, I don't I'm not really sure what my, what my preparation looked like or what it would look like if I had the opportunity to do right. it again. Right. Um, but um, I, I've probably been participating in grid. I did like the SAGL and stuff like that, so I kind of knew what to expect there, and, and still training and doing grid at the same time. So I, I've I've been I've done that before. So I was. I was kind of excited about, you know, I think Josh sent me a, a message the day that the games was over. I think Sunday night I got a message, and he says, how do you feel? And I said, I'm ready to do some 145 thrusters in quadrant one, two, three, or 4. You tell me which one that's happening. <laughs> so, and he said, awesome. So, uh, you know, I think, um, you know, both Lindy and I were collegiate athletes, so we know what it's like to push our bodies to the limits and then have to still get up the next day yep. and push our bodies to the limits mm-hmm. if that's what's needed of us for our team. And I think that's kind of the mentality that we both have when it comes to uh, team sports. And I'm sure yeah. being athletes, too, when, when the pressure's on and you're in front of the crowd and all of a sudden you hear the buzzer sound, right, uh, there's got to be some kind of mechanism that goes off in your head because you guys are such good athletes that you're like, oh, th- that three or four rep you said feels like it's you know, 20 minutes into an AMRAP. I'm sure at that time it starts to feel like, oh, no, I, 
I can do this now. I got yeah. this. Right? And then it's the coach's job to, to decide when not to do that, right? So, right. yeah, and there's, <laughs> yeah, that's the, that's the fine line. It's because yeah. he and I talked about that, too. And obviously, I want to be in everything. Like, I'm the competitive athlete. I want to do everything. And I'm like, sure, coach, put me in. Like, I can definitely do this. And what he was kind of telling me was, I'm sure you could. Like, I, am, I know that if I put you in there, you would do really well. But then it's the, the same recovery afterwards. Like, you don't really feel it. It's like the same thing if, like, you're, I don't know, I've never been in a fight. But what I've been told is that if, like, you're in a fight and you get hit, it doesn't hurt until after the fight is over. Yeah. Same kind of thing, like, in these races and in these competitions and at the games or in a grid match. You, it sure, it hurts, but you always can keep going. And then it's the aftermath. It's the next day that you're like, wow, those extra five reps took this toll. And you, then you feel that soreness. And... Um, we didn't want to, he knew, I knew that I could do it and I knew that I could grit through it and push through it and do these movements, but we didn't want to then next week, all of a sudden be back to square run and be back to needing to sleep for three days and put myself in even more of a deficit. So as athletes, we're all very competitive and clearly we know our bodies very well and we know what we can do and what we're capable of and we want to push and we will be able to do it. But it's the aftermath that you don't want to, you don't want to take it too far in the, in the midst of competition when you still have more competitions and more upcoming matches. Sure, absolutely. I mean, uh, so I, I can relate to that a little bit. When I was in high school, I was a competitive baseball player, and I was a, I was a pitcher. And uh, I went, my fastball went from like a 92 mile an hour fastball down to like an 84 in a week time period, right? And uh, and then, but during that time, uh, I even saw some doctors, and they said, oh, you know, you have um, your bursas inflated, and, you know, they didn't really get into my shoulder that much. They were like, take six Motrin before every game. You'll be fine. <laughs> so I would do that, and I would pitch, and, and I would have that mechanism that just turned on, right? And so then I would just pitch my ass off in the game. But I knew, and my coaches knew, when my fastball started going to 82, 80, 78, and I was getting rocked, someone should have stopped me. You know, I'm not going to stop me. Right. I'm going to keep going gonna as hard as that. I can. Right? So I can definitely relate to that. And that's, uh, that's, that's tough sometimes. you got to have a good coach. To watch over you. You know, one of the things Witt said that um, I uh, keyed in on that we hear this a lot, actually, when we analyze a lot of the grid athletes and we talk to interview a lot of them and, and talk to a lot of people that do the games and grid, there's a definitely a distinct difference between folks that have been on high-level team sports prior to this uh, and how they are able to deal with this, right? So maybe they're an elite athlete, no doubt, right, but haven't played team sports, haven't done the grind of game after game after game, and had to do what you two ladies have done for years now before grid, right? So do you, do you do you guys agree? Do you see that? Do you do you do you see that in your in, in other athletes? Do you notice the difference between folks that really haven't had to do the grind, like they just do one big event and then it goes away for months, and then you know I get to prep for it again when you guys have woken up you know every week or you know days in a row if you have uh, games right after each other. Do you, do you guys see that, or what do you think? I do. I mean, I think I think it relates well. I think that it's exactly what Wit was talking about earlier, is that when you're a collegiate athlete and there's there's no room for whining or I'm tired or it's not an excuse, it doesn't matter. It's like, well, you have a second session a day and I need you to do these sprints, so that's the end of it and I need you to win. And so the, your brain just shuts off and you just turn off. That's why I think probably Wit and I have become good at CrossFit is because we're good at turning your brain off. And you know, the pain that you feel is no longer an issue. It doesn't matter. You have to keep going and you have to just keep pushing. And yes, it's uncomfortable, but you know that you have to keep going. And both her and I come from team sports and in team sports, it's very different than CrossFit because you know, you have to keep going because your teammates are depending on you. And that's the same kind of thing here in grid. If, you know, if I don't get my 10 muscle ups unbroken or if she doesn't get her 10 snatches unbroken, then someone else is going to have to carry the brunt of that work. And that's not, that's not a good feeling as a teammate when you're expected to do something and you have told them that yes this is what I can complete and all of a sudden you don't you can't complete that work and someone else has to do it for you it's like for me it's a terrible like I would feel awful to put that burden then on my teammate yes that they're there to pick it up but you want to be the absolute best that you can so that your team is successful because you also expect the same out of your teammates and I think that same kind of thing applies and cross it's a little different because you're going to be expecting of yourself and you'll be only letting yourself down but in the team you don't want to let your teammates down. You want sure. to give them exactly what you told them that you can provide to them as a teammate, and you don't want to give them anything less. Right. Because um, right. then it seems like you're, you as a team will fail. So wait, tell me, um, I'd like to get your perspective on both of you, actually, but I, I ask all games athletes this, and you said this was your first games, and so now you, maybe you can look back on how your training was in preparation. Um, one of the things I, I get asked a lot when, uh, uh, to, to ask it, people that do both grid and CrossFit uh, as a sport is so CrossFit attacks your weaknesses. So you have to attack your weaknesses. You have to find out where your the chinks in your armor are. And that's one of the coolest things about it is because you have to be a well-rounded athlete in grid. It celebrates your strengths. 
So what you're good at, do you, do you, when, when you're doing both, how do you attack your weaknesses and raise your strengths so that you're, when, you know, when somebody wants you to do your strength, whatever that is, your body weight or you know, a barbell, whatever movement. So it, do you guys think of it that way or that, does that come into play? Uh, you know, I think that's a good question because um, in my opinion, you know, everybody says, well, grid, you know, all you do is you play to your strengths. And, you know, I think one thing that makes me stronger as an athlete mentally and physically is tackling my weaknesses. So if I can tackle my weaknesses but then also work on my strengths, that makes my strengths even stronger. So yep. while, you know, while, you know, grid is different in that I might only be participating in my strengths and grid um you know i'm still working on my weaknesses just in case that scary situation of you know somebody can't finish those last couple reps and it you're it's on you to do it you know mm-hmm. so i don't i don't really think that um you know you want to work on your your strengths but i don't think that you totally shy away from your weaknesses when it comes to grid and you know especially i think lindy and i are both considered kind of like the generalist of an athlete so i think that our training doesn't doesn't really shy that much. Maybe she's a little bit more gymnastic than I am, and I'm a little bit more barbell than she is. But I think overall we'll still um, train basically the same way outside of potentially changing up instead of doing Metcon you're doing more of like an EMOM for, for that week or, you know, that couple weeks leading up to the match. But I think that would be the only real difference. Yeah, I, to- I totally agree. It's what she's saying about being a generalist, and that's that's kind of what I like about being a journalist, and that's yeah. what I love about CrossFit is that you're never, you know, you don't get bored because, and you get frustrated as an athlete, but you know that those frustrating workouts are the things that are going to make you better 100% in the end. And in grid, being a generalist, we have to be the athlete that, yes, can handle the barbell and quadrant four, but also, like, hmm, we also need you to do 20 chest bar pull-ups super fast, like, so I need you to do that and then go handle the barbell and four. So it's also interesting. It's great to be the generalist, and yes, it's amazing and good to be a specialist but it's also fun to be a generalist because you're not also just subject to only holding the barbell at the end you can also do the muscle ups and then go and do the heavy barbell in the end or we can ask you to do five here five here five here and five here so you get to kind of play through everything but through that you can't you have to train everything yeah. you ha- you're going to be expected and asked to do gymnastics and body weight and barbell stuff so you need to continue to train in that in that circuit style to make sure that you're not missing anything. Awesome. Well, thank you very much for joining us guys on, yeah. on the show and having morning coffee with us right before your match. And uh, so uh, clean up your jerks and snatches, drink your beer in batches, and always dominate your grid matches. See you later, guys. See ya.